and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. That's what I've got this poster behind me. Um, judgment Day is coming. Praise God that death will pass over his elect, his remnant. No, the word of the gospel is a word that comes to the rebel heart. I am a rebel against God. I may be indifferent to him, I may be antagonistic to him, but I'm actually rebelling against him. He then comes by the Bible and he says, I'm commanding you to do an about turn to repent of your sins and to believe in me. And the individual says, there is no way that that is going to happen. It'll take a miracle for that to happen. Yes, it will. And that is the miracle of regeneration. 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 Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, the Savior of the world. He is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Well, nice. thanks for joining me uh, in today's video. We've got um, a video today on Jesus, the Jewish savior of the world. The Jewish man who brought salvation unto all flesh, Jew and Gentile. For indeed he was the promised Messiah. The Old Testament speaks of the promised Messiah throughout it throughout the torah throughout the prophets and throughout the writings we read of the coming savior you know all throughout the writings we have a few incidences i'm going to mention today and i'm going to talk about how we know that jesus is indeed the messiah the promised one um, who would save everyone the jews and the gentiles anyone who would believe in him I'm going to start with one of the most famous passages, Isaiah 53. Now in Isaiah 53, I'm not going to read everyone, I will post them on this uh, video. Um, but Isaiah 53, we have that Jesus was pierced, or sorry, the Messiah will be pierced for our transgressions. He will be led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Um, and we read that he'll be pierced for our transgressions in verse 5. So if you read Isaiah 53, it's incredible how closely that fits Jesus' life. The fact that he was pierced for our transgressions, that he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And there are other parts in there as well, that he'll be bruised, um, that he, the Lord shall prosper him, uh, that his portion will be great. Uh, that on him he bore the sin of many, many things. And um, that would be a great place to start your journey, to discover that indeed Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. He fulfilled them. Another one we read of is in Malachi, where we read that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. We read Micah 5, 2 and make a, uh, verse 4 and 5 but you Bethlehem though you are little among the thousands of Judah yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel the Messiah out of Bethlehem where was Jesus born that's right Bethlehem a second one you know and uh, there are many but we'll do a few today Micah 2 another one we read about um, is in Daniel chapter 9. We read about the Messiah to be cut off before the destruction of the second temple. Now the second temple was destroyed in Jerusalem in 70 AD. We no longer had the sacrifices uh, to make atonement for sins. But that's because God provided a sacrifice for all sin, the Messiah, the Savior. In Daniel chapter 9 we read, um, and after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So we have the temple's destruction in 70 AD. The Messiah must come before the temple is destroyed. We read that in Daniel chapter 9. 
So that's three things that Jesus, Yeshua, fulfilled. We also have that for God's atonement, for God's forgiveness, we must have um, the shedding of blood. For God's, you know, for the, for the covenant to be um, put into action, we must have the blood. We read in Leviticus 17, For life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So what happened under, under God's decree was that uh, the Jewish people would sacrifice a lamb um, to make atonement for their sins um, so that um, they would know forgiveness because you know they'd fall short of the law and they wouldn't necessarily keep the law and then um, they'd shed the blood of the lambs um, so to make atonement for their souls. Um, but they haven't been sacrificing um, since 70 AD, since the temple was destroyed. Um, but um, there's no need anymore because there's been a final sacrifice. There's been a final shedding of blood. Uh, the Lamb of God, Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Yes, indeed, Jesus' blood was shed to make atonement for our souls. So that's the fourth thing that's been fulfilled. And there are many. We also need, need the Messiah to, to come to Jerusalem, having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey. We read this in Zechariah 9, verse 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, King, Messiah. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. Well, we read about Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey in Luke. Every year at Easter in, in churches, you'll have donkeys come into the church because Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey. He fulfilled the prophecy. We have in Psalm chapter 16, Verse 9 and 10, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in sure, nor will you allow your Holy One, the Messiah, you know, Holy One, there's only one who's holy, the Messiah, who, and only one who is holy, God. So the Messiah is God. You know, if you study the Scriptures, you know, you're left without any question. Jesus is the Holy One of Israel. He was there in the beginning. He is God. Um, hallelujah. Your Holy One will not see corruption, decay. As in, your Holy One will not perish. As in, the ho your Holy One, as in the Messiah, will not die, will not see corruption. He'll not die. Well, we know that Jesus, on the third day, he rose again. He overcame the grave. Another one fulfilled. The Holy One would not see the corruption. And he didn't. He rose again. These are just a few things. <laughs> but indeed, Jesus was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. We read also in Isaiah 9. I mean, we've got to get into our Bibles. This is just incredible. I love this stuff. But he did fulfill the scriptures. He did. He came. He was, God, he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob come to dwell amongst his people, and his own did not recognize him. How ironic. The pure and sinless, spotless bride of, bridegroom of heaven came into the earth, and the, the religious bigots and zealots, um, they didn't recognize him. And Jesus got angry with them. In fact, he called them a brood of vipers. Now, this was like one of the, the it was like the worst slur in, um, in Jewish culture, a brood of vipers. It was, a, it was like the worst thing you could say. And he called the religious men, you know, although they keep, the, they tried to keep the law, 
they didn't even see that the law was being fulfilled in their midst. For indeed, Jesus' blood, you know, was sealed the new covenant with uh, Israel and all, and to the ends of the earth, to all creation. Hallelujah. So Jesus fulfilled the law and um, he fulfilled all these prophecies. As I suggested, he fulfilled the Tanakh. He fulfilled everything in the Old Testament and he's brought a new covenant into the earth. Covenant means promise. He's brought a new promise into the earth. Anyone who believes in him will be saved. And so we will live by faith and not by sight. It's faith that pleases God. So it's a call into a holy faith, a holy communion with your Father in heaven, your Creator. And it's only through Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, as you put your faith in Jesus, as you trust in Jesus and in His Word and in His salvation and in, it, and in His resurrection, that you're brought out of the, from under the law, which will lead to death and into life. And this is the best news in all the earth. God is faithful to His promises. He's faithful to His covenant. He's the covenant-keeping God. And this message has changed the nations and it can save our generation as we put our faith in Jesus. So put your faith in Jesus at this hour. It is the best thing you'll ever do. You'll become a new creation in Jesus, for indeed in Him is no condemnation, no shame. We're free from sin. We're, 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 we're brought, we're given life. Life forevermore. Put your hope in Him. He's the only one worthy of your hope. Don't put your hope in false gods, in Allah, in Hindu gods, in the moon god Allah, or in Hindu gods, or in um, the gods of men. The, uh, you know, don't put your hope in celebrities or in football teams. Put your hope in the living God of Israel, Yahweh, Adonai, the King of glory, who has come and dwelt amongst us and loves every one of us, from the least to the lost, to the rich, to the poor. Um, and he loves to draw alongside us and, and uh, give us and, and, and also just give us resurrection life. Hallelujah. So that today's video is on uh, the Jewish Savior of the world, for indeed salvation was unto the Jew first, but then to the Greek. That's me and you. Unless, of course, you're a Jew listening. If you, and if you are, I pray that you receive Jesus as your Messiah. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. That's what I've got this poster behind me. Um, judgment Day is coming. Praise God that death will pass over his elect, his remnant. Hallelujah. I was using lots of Bible words there. If, you, if you're wondering um, about any of them, just look them up um, and start your own journey of faith. All right. Bless you all. I'll, speak, I'll see you soon.